Today we are going to say a prayer for the golfers of the world. If it goes to the right, it's a slice. If it goes to the left, it's a hook. If it goes straight, it's a mirror. He's playing in such a wonderful foursome here with General Bradley, uh, Dr. Middlecoff, and uh, the dentist. Of course, this is the first time I've played with a dentist. I understand that when he gets on the green, the putty looks at the hole and says, open a little wider, please. Girl caddies are old hat today, but they weren't back in the long ago times of World War II. This was a newsreel fantasy for a Jackie Gleason lookalike and his golfing buddies in Miami Beach, 1942. Remember, those were the days of Rosie the Riveter, so don't feel sorry for Kathy the caddy. She had a sunnier deal in balmier surroundings. Now let's salute the most famous golfer of all time, the incomparable Bobby Jones, who dominated the golf scene of the 20s and was the only man ever to win golf's Grand Slam, the U.S. and British amateurs, and the U.S. and British Opens in one fantastic year. T. Jones, Jr. of Atlanta, Georgia. The superstar of the 30s came from the other side of the country. That's him, Lawson Little of California, winning the 1935 U.S. Amateur Championship in Cleveland, Ohio. Little did something even Bobby Jones didn't do. In 34 and 35, he won the U.S. and British Open Championships back to back. William Lawson Little, Jr. Uh, I think it has to do with the aerodynamics of how far the ball will go against the wind. To control the flight of the ball, imaginable. I, 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 I assume, I don't know, definitely. Uh, I think they're cuter that way. Well, I think it has something to do with the, with the club, hitting the club. It makes the ball go further. I think it affects the flight in some, in some way. Dimples. <laughs> Dimples? I don't know. I think it makes them roll better on the grass. Oh, no, I think they go up in the air better. When oh, you that's hit true, them. that's true. Sure. That's good. Uh, I have no idea. <laughs> Because you're smiling all the time? Uh, it makes it easier to hit him. So that it sort of sticks and it doesn't roll. Um, doesn't that sound plausible? Because it's more interesting. It has to do with airflow or something like that, I believe. Well, it could be many things. Maybe flying through the air, going along the ground easier. And my grandson has little fingers, he could pick it up easier. <laughs> The scientific reason is that they help to give the ball the correct lift. When the ball struck correctly, it will create the correct tra trajectory. We have a very fine foursome here with George Fazio, I'm Gordon close. McRae, and uh, <laughs> who else is playing? Here I am, <laughs> Albert Webb. We also have uh, Mr. Sinatra with us, Frank. He's a very fine golfer. He's one of the best number three irons I've ever used. <laughs> Tarzan, Andy Hardy, The Mick, Hey Lucy, Hey Dean, Holy cow, it's the scooter. Jackie. Whitey. Yogi. Are you 
in form for today? Oh, I'm in fine shape. I've had my second cup of tea with a dash of adrenaline, and I'm ready. I was looking at you, and I think you better get home. You're starting to look like your passport Isn't picture. Isn't that something? Yeah. I look like Bella Lugosi with Peter Lorre's head, don't I? <laughs> Connie. Happy. Just cry. Inka dinka do. It's the schnoz. Big Don. Rocky One. Let's go to press. Ski Nose, Jane, and Dennis. We like Ike. Mayor. It has nothing to do with the political questions that have been asked today. How long has your wife worn bangs? <laughs> what have accordions got to do with golf? But then again, what do snow and mountains have to do with it either? They all go together in this one-time snow tournament at Mount Baker, Washington, where golfers on skis can't wait for the spring. The golf ball is black, with a string attached to find it in the snow. Not a single sand trap on the course, nor a single green, for that matter. The guy on the left is a better skier, but the one on the right has him beaten at putting. to Herringbone Hill. Snow skiing and snow golf. It's wunderbar. Once upon a time, there was a five-year-old girl named Lana K. Roberts who lived in Chicago and liked to play golf. Like the rest of us, she got disgusted when she landed in sand traps, but she'd plant her feet firmly and blast her way out in very good fashion. No wonder, her pop, Johnny, was a trick golfer. Try this, sitting down. Or try this, standing up. John and little Lana. Speaking of hitters, Denny Shute, who won PGA championships back to back in 36 and 37, could do super accurate shooting in quick succession too. Hitter now, Sammy Sneed, who began his golf career when the stymie shot was obligatory, not obsolete. Sammy Sneed, a master of the shell game. I think I'd find out if uh, Nancy Lopez had a daughter, and then I'd uh, golf, go golfing with her. My boyfriend. I'd play with my husband just to see what that would feel like. <laughs> <laughs> my dad. My son. Thank you. What a thing. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, my husband in one of his more patient moods. Samantha Fox. Tom Cruise. My mother-in-law. I shouldn't say this, but Victoria Principal. I'd just like to see her swing a golf club. <laughs> well, maybe Melanie Griffith. Mickey Mantle. Definitely Rod Stewart, and why not? Brooke Shields? Brooke Shields? Yeah. Um, John McCoy. I think my husband, because he's my hero. <laughs> I think I'd like to play with uh, Dan Quayle. I think George Bush would make a good golf partner. I was in 
It's a place called Wintergreen, and it's in Virginia. And we were just, we weren't even playing golf. I was with a friend, and we were walking along the golf course. And this is with Mo. And um, we were on the side, and someone yelled when they were playing golf, watch out. And I was standing in front of this man, and I moved my head, and the golf ball hit me like somewhere. 24-year-old Arnie Palmer, 43-year-old John Sweeney, and the final round of the 1954 U.S. Amateur Championship at Detroit, Michigan. One up, Palmer will win the national title, turn pro, and go on to become the first man to win $1 million in total earnings by 1968. Young Arnie, the peerless Pennsylvanian, about to launch the golden age of golf. But the previous decade belonged to a little guy from Texas, Ben Hogan. Ben Hogan tees off in the final round. Tony Penna drives. And here's Ed Oliver. Runner-up Tony Penna comes through with a beautiful approach shot that thrills the gallery. Watch the backspin. The pressure takes its toll as Tony's putting loses its edge. Hogan discovers his golden touch missing, too. Now, little Ben tries a little putt, still a little off. The Riviera Country Club course is mighty tricky, but Ed Oliver turns in a right smart putt. Hogan, striving to repeat his 1942 victory, still has his troubles. But despite his occasional putting disappointments, Hogan plays all around great golf. Finishing up with a course smashing 280, four under par, to take the title in the 21st annual $10,000 Los Angeles Open. And he's mighty happy over the $2,000 first prize payoff. Nice going, Ben. Dwight D. Eisenhower wasn't the first U.S. president to play golf. But no president did more to popularize the game. In the 1950s, when invading squirrels dug holes in his White House putting green and messed up his practice shots, he put up a fence to keep the rascals out. In this flap, a pro squirrel politician had the last word, and the fence came down. Desist before he does permanent and irreparable damage to an American tradition, if it has not already been done. Presidents might come and presidents might go. But the White House squirrels presumably, presumably could go on forever. That is, they could go on forever until they began scratching Dwight D. Eisenhower's favorite putting green. Golf is a game that keeps no one out of the fun. Even amputees have enjoyed the sport. Scotland helped lead the way by holding open golf championships for the Society of One-Armed Golfers. Even more remarkable are golfers who are blind. In this tournament, a U.S. team of sightless golfers, led by champion Charlie Boswell of Birmingham, Alabama, beat a team of Canadian aces. A courageous show of phenomenal skill that would make any golfer stand up and take notice. Samuel Jackson Sneed of West Virginia. Slammin' Sammy, they called him. One of the most stylish golfing winners of all time. Sammy broke his hand in a high school football game and started swinging a golf club to keep the hand from stiffening. Those hands went on to make golf history. Sammy uses an interlocking grip, keeping the left hand firm, yet allowing freedom of wrist action. For the left hand is the guiding hand. The right one, little more than a finger grip. Sneed had great natural talent with perfect balance and rhythm every time. Notice the smoothness of acceleration, the weight shift, and the follow through. Here's another look at his stance. The ball placed slightly forward of a point midway between his feet and his weight balanced evenly. Where to now, Sam? An iron shot? The grip is basically the same, the left hand well over, the other hand so placed that the thumb and forefinger form a V that points diagonally over the right shoulder. Mind the right hip, and over it goes. 
the club face meets the ball slightly below its horizontal axis. Now for one of golf's commoner trouble shots. In sand play, Sammy makes it a point to plant his feet firmly, aiming to hit slightly behind the ball and once more swinging smoothly and easily. In short approaches to the green, the length of backswing is determined by the distance to the tee. Hmm, not bad. As for putting, this is one of the reasons why he won more tournaments than anyone else. Samuel Jackson Sneed. Walter Hagen of Rochester, New York, ruled the golf world from 1914 to 1929 and was the first truly renowned professional golfer. Of him, Ben Hogan said, he had the greatest mental approach to golf that any player ever had. He never let a missed shot get him down. And what a gift he had for the bow jest. When he won his first British Open, he gave his entire prize money, $500, to his caddy. To demonstrate how the stance causes the hook and the slice, Hagen has drawn a circle with four quadrants. Stepping toward the forward quarter, the left foot moves ahead of the right, thus closing the stance, and the result, a sweeping hook. Stepping to the rear quarter, we find ourselves in the slicing sector, for the left foot is slightly to the rear of the right one, and the stance is open. Standing thus, you slice. And what happens when both feet are parallel to the target line? Zoom, 275 yards straight down the fairway. Let's see how Hagen gets out of a sand trap. Watch his swing, for he has his own form for blasting out. Not so much the smooth swing of Sneed, but more of a punching stroke. Still, the results are the same. And that's why the sharpshooters tell you that form, after all, is your own particular style. Any style that you use to achieve consistently the best possible results. One of golf's greatest shot makers, and one of its most colorful personalities, Walter Hagen. Patty Berg of Minneapolis, Minnesota, one of the original inductees into the Women's Golf Hall of Fame. It's been said of her that she could handle a club with her fingers like no one since Walter Hagen, and that she expresses her full personality as she plays each shot. In a full wide arcing backswing, Patty's right hip fades with the sweep, bringing her left shoulder to the fore. And here is the source of her driving power. From the left shoulder starts the downswing that brings the club head into the ball at the moment of maximum speed. Once again, this time at closer range. Back comes the club, face open at the completion of the backswing. And down comes the club head. The wrists turn over and the right hip completes the pivot. All the elements of her smooth as satin swing. A superstar of women's golf, she won 84 titles and 15 major championships. Patty Berg. Hey, a variation. Take ultra-long and flexible shafts and a pellet set on a steel track so that even the world's worst hacker can't miss it. It all adds up to a game in which the round bellies can hit as far as the flat bellies can. The club head is all sweet spot. Let's really go for distance. Golf it ain't, but what a chance to belt one. Years ago, two guys in Buffalo, New York thought this one up. The club pro tees off normally. The other guy uses firearms. No game is as rich in craziness as golf. Golfers have challenged archers, javelin throwers, and billiard players. So choose your weapons and fire away. 
But wait a minute. This gunner's cheating. He's using the wrong end. Golf lunacy is shooting birdies instead of hitting them. From golf lunatics to golf robotics. Someone in Miami built this mechanical contraption for Tucson. Well, what have we here? A putter that never misses. Pretty tricky. Speaking of tricks, Babe Zaharias tries one. And here's the master of trick golf, Joe Kirkwood. Stymied? No. And finally, two for the road. Pebble Beach, Florida Keys, Hawaii. No, oh, no, Palisades. <laughs> yeah, Palisades Golf Club. Hawaii, because uh, I wouldn't be on the course. And I'd rather <laughs> be on the beach. Bermuda. Oh, Scottsdale, Arizona. I guess in Arizona, yeah, we like it. You really like it there. Where would it be? Midtown Manhattan. Bop, bop, shoo-bee-doo-wop, bop, 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 shoo-bee-doo-wop, bop, bop, shoo-bee-doo-wop, bop, bop, shoo-bee-doo-wop, bop, bop, shoo-bee-doo-wop, b